All right, what's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin Duty, and this is Duty's Daggers and Irons or Duty's Daggers and Iron. <laughs> um, we're at the new desk. If you've been following along, I've been uh, sequestered into the garage recently uh, to my old desk in there uh, because I recently moved into a new place and we were waiting for carpets to get put in before I could kind of get my whole uh, room set up the way I wanted it with the desk I wanted and uh, it's finally happened so I'm in my room right now next to a window we have some beautiful natural light coming in here which I love we don't have to deal with those bright LED lights that were in the garage no more squeaky chair we have much more room on the desk it's just uh, it's all coming together folks so I hope you guys appreciate the the nice looking lighting here and everything uh, I think it looks really freaking good I'll probably film all my videos right at about this time of night it's about 6:45, and I think this lighting is absolutely awesome so today's video is we're just gonna look at all of my EDC stuff <laughs> um, excluding knives um, there are a couple knives kind of in here, but folding knives is going to be uh, a separate category. We will look at my four or five um, favorite knives and uh, finest knives, I guess you could say. But first of all, we're going to go through all of my EDC gadgets. Now, when I had the idea for this video, I thought I had a lot more stuff. And now that it's kind of all out on the table, it doesn't really look like very much. And maybe I'm missing some stuff somewhere. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I did just move, and some of my stuff is still in boxes. So that is possible. Uh, so we'll see. But um, this was all the stuff that was within reach. Uh, you know, uh, so I just laid it out here, and let's talk about them. Um, all right, let's, uh, where should we start? You tell me. Um, okay, let's start with this. This is a pouch, leather pouch, for my Victorinox Tinker. This is a... This is a Tinker. <laughs> um, I replaced the black... It came with the, the black plastic scales. I replaced them with Micarta. Uh, I bought these on Etsy for, I think, around 30 35 bucks. And I really, really love the knife, uh, or the multi-tool, I guess, that much more with these on there. Um, so they sell, uh, how it works is they sell them um, according to the size of the knife, or the uh, Victorinox, and they, they measure them in millimeters. So I believe this one, uh, I can't remember now, I think it was like 38 millimeters? Uh, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. But just make sure you look up what type of uh, Victorinox you have and then what size it is and then you can order the correct scales for it. Um, the pouch is made by Rough Rider. Uh, you might be familiar with Rough Rider knives. They make a lot of uh, mostly slip joints. Um, and I saw they had these on there. They sell a small, medium, and large. This is the medium. And uh, it fits my Tinker perfectly right in there. Um, if you don't know, the Tinker is a pretty great multi-tool. It's got a full-size blade. Then we have a secondary smaller blade. We've got can opener and small flathead there. We've got cap lifter, bigger flathead, and I believe those are uh, wire strippers there, I think. Then on the other side, we got a full 3D Phillips head, probably my favorite thing about the knife. Um, I use this thing all the time, and it's really nice to have a full 3D one as opposed to kind of like the flat ones that you see on a lot of multi-tools. So love that, and then the awl. So, and then obviously a toothpick and tweezers. And uh, this thing is great. The only thing it's missing is scissors, but I really don't find myself in a scenario very often where I would need scissors, so. Um, this is a this is a perfect multi-tool for me as far as uh, Victorinox goes. So that lives right in there. 
I guess just we'll go down the line. This is my Streamlight wedge. Uh, I carry this thing every single day ever since I've gotten it. I really, really love this flashlight. It carries like a knife. It's got a deep carry pocket clip like you would see on a knife. Particularly this one reminds me of a Benchmade clip. Um, it goes in and out of the pocket just super duper easy. Uh, this thing is bright. Uh, it's got two modes. So you how you actuate it is you rotate this thing forward and you'll see that uh, there's a green light there. We have a battery indicator. And the first mode is 300 lumens and then it has what's called a throw mode where you uh, push this knob forward again and it boosts up to 1000 lumens which is pretty nuts. Um, it can only stay at the 1000 lumens for 35 seconds um, and then it automatically reverts back to the 300 uh, but I mean that doesn't bother me one bit. Um, I, don't, I never need 1000 lumens for longer than 35 seconds. Honestly I never really need 1000 lumens at all but it is kinda cool to have. Um, this thing is bright with uh, the 300 lumens is perfectly good for me. Um, it's slim, like I said, carries in the pocket super well. Um, you know, uh, the, the flashlight I was carrying before is this um, Olight i3 TEOS, which is only 150 lumens or 130 or something. Um, and it doesn't really have, I mean, it's substantially smaller, but it's not as bright. I honestly don't think it carries quite as well it sounds weird but it's hard to explain you'll just have to put these in your pocket and you'll see what I'm talking about um, this thing it doesn't take up that much room it kind of sits like on the back seam of your pocket it's not wide so it's just it's back there and you have room in your pocket for a bunch of other stuff um, it's USB-C rechargeable it is waterproof up to one meter and drop proof up to one meter so Really, really like this flashlight. This next one uh, was my first EDC flashlight. It's um, it's pretty cheap, but good flashlight, I think. Uh, it's the Lumentop EDC One. This thing's got three brightnesses. I don't know the lumens for them, but it goes uh, high, medium, low. Um, it's a twist uh, actuated flashlight. This thing's got a pretty nice patina on it from just being carried a lot. It's small. It's very small. This is a good keychain flashlight. Um, not as good as... What? I didn't know you could do that. What the heck? You could push it in and it turns the light on. I never knew that it could do that. And it cycles through the modes? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I never knew it could do that. Wow. Okay, well that makes it even cooler. Um, this is the Lumentop EDC-1. Um, great flashlight. Um, this is my EDC pen. Um, this is the uh, space pen. Yeah, it's the Fisher space pen in brass. Um, this pen is great. Um, it's very small package until you kind of unfurl it and then it becomes a, a full-size pen. And uh, you can buy these clips on Amazon. I, I forget the name exactly for them, but if you just type in Fisher Space Pen Clip, this will come up. It's very cheap. Um, I don't really use it to clip onto anything, really. Uh, I mostly got it so that it wouldn't roll off the table. Um, I would set this down on the counter and it would always be rolling off you know it it'd be rolling off so this prevents that and you know also if I do want to ever clip it on something I have the option to do that this thing got a uh, has a very nice patina on it really like how it came along um, I love getting brass and copper so you can see the progression of the patina um, this one's looking really good and then it's the Olight i3 T EOS that I mentioned earlier. This one is also in brass, um, but I did a forced shipwreck patina on it. Check out those blues. Very, very nice. I think it turned out pretty good. If you guys want to know how to do it, uh, just, just do a little Google search. Um, 
the only ingredients you need is ammonia and salt <laughs> and uh, that's it pretty good flashlight like I said um, it's got a, uh, a bright mode and a low mode um, the main thing I really like about the flashlight is it has that hat the hat clip so that you can clip this on your bill of your hat and have like a little headlamp um, that's the main thing I like about the light and um, also I just like that it's in brass Aside from that, as a flashlight, it's it's okay. I wouldn't say it's amazing, but it's for the price, it's a it's a great flashlight. Next is uh, this little knuckle that I made. Um, I went through a phase where I was trying to make knuckles, um, and I I tried a couple different designs, and this was the most simplistic and the one that worked the best. I think um, you just slip it on your finger. You have this bar down here to kind of brace your fingers against right here. So when you go to hit something, you know, uh, the impact of that travels down into your fingers here, um, not right into your palm. So um, it was a pretty good design. I, I punched some bricks and stuff to try it out, and uh, it really didn't hurt my knuckles at all. So um, this, I think this was a, a pretty good design. Um, obviously, I don't, I don't really carry this thing ever at all um, I just was messing around trying to make something fun and uh, yeah it's cool to have feel free to steal this design and make one yourself it works pretty good next up we got some titanium tweezers now I found these on Amazon for pretty cheap and it came with this and a smaller size which was about that long and those smaller ones I carry in my truck and this is kinda just my home tweezers uh, I'm constantly getting metal slivers uh, in my fingers at work, so I always carry a good pair of tweezers. These have a nice real fine tip, and um, there's no like weird gap at the end, so you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. If you get a pair of cheap tweezers, and there's somehow a gap at, at the end, and they don't grab, um, but these do pretty well. And they're titanium, they're anodized uh, purplish color. Uh, great for a keychain tweezer, especially the smaller ones. Um, they've got that ring up here, so you can uh, throw a split ring up there. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Now this one uh, I picked up at the local farm supply. Thought it was kind of cool. Um, it's just a, uh, it's a pair of nail clippers. It's kind of cool how they open too. Um, so you just kind of push up and they pop out. There's a magnet in here somewhere. So this lever kind of folds down and then you, uh, it just snaps back into place. Pretty cool. Um, they're not the sharpest, best nail clippers I've ever tried, but they certainly work just fine. Um, I just liked how small they folded up. Um, and you also have some scissors in here. And I believe a knife, yep, a knife and a nail file. How do you come out? There we go. Yep, knife and a nail file. So I just thought that was a pretty cool, like, uh, really compact grooming kind of kit uh, or tool. So that's why I picked it up. Good for travel. Just throw this in and, you know, you've got, you know, nail clippers, scissors, file, knife all in one. <laughs> Oh, the brand is uh, True, apparently. I'd never heard of that before, but... Yep, there you go. <clears throat> I'm going to try to put links to everything that I can down below um, to Amazon. So if you guys see anything here that you want to pick up, uh, there's going to be a link for it down below, if it is on Amazon. Uh, and if not, it'll, uh, you know, I'll try to put a link to take you somewhere else, but... Uh, I am an Amazon affiliate, so... That means if you guys use one of my links to buy something, I get um, a very small percentage of that sale. <clears throat> Just to give you an example of uh, how small that percentage actually is. Uh, I've been an affiliate for about two months now. Um, I've sold five things. So people have used my links five times to buy things. And the total that I've made from that is four dollars and some cents, some change. So it's, it's really... Um, it's less than a dollar for each thing so um, and that 
obviously would go up a bit if they bought a really expensive item, but you know, I don't really have anything here that's super duper expensive. So, anyways, the Leatherman Micra. So, actually, you know what? Let's talk first about the Gerber dime because the Gerber dime leads to the Leatherman Micra, at least in my mind. So, this is the Gerber dime. This is the first small keychain multi tool that I bought. And I mainly bought it. I mainly bought it because it was cheap. Um, and truth be told, I do not like this multi-tool at all. It sucks. Um, in my opinion, it sucks. So first of all, the reason I don't like it, the pliers feel cheap. They're not very grabby. I mean, you know, they grab, but they they just feel weak. There's a, a lot of flex here. You can see. Um, but actually, the main reason I don't like this thing is the tools are so hard to get out. I mean, I, I, I feel like I'm going to break my fingernail every time I try to get something out of here. Um, I've tried loosening up these pivots, but then they're just rattling around uh, in there. So there's no happy medium with it. But let's go through the tools regardless uh, while I break my fingernails trying to do it. We have a, a small flathead. We have a smaller flathead and file, a very crappy file. We have scissors, decent scissors. They work fine. Knife, really weirdly shaped knife. I do not like that at all. <laughs> uh, what is this? Can I even, I can't get it out. I can feel my fingernail bending. Um, let's see. There we go. Oh yeah, it's the package opener. That, that works pretty good. And then the cap lifter is just hanging off the end here for uh, no apparent reason. I mean, it works good, but come on. It just It's so much more space that it's taking up that it just it sucks. So that's the Gerber Dime. Now, I got the Gerber Dime and didn't like it, so I decided to get the Leatherman Micra, which has a different main tool. These have scissors instead of pliers. But um, I love this thing so, so much more than the Gerber Dime. So much more. This is the Ger uh, Leatherman Micra. Um, it's got a really, really nice pair of scissors. These things cut so well. A um, little bit of flex, but not nearly as much as on the Gerber. Um, we have tweezers. We have, what is this? Small flat head. Smaller flat head and a cap lifter. And over here we have a knife. Looks like a, a tiny little clip point blade. Um, bigger flat head and then a really good file and a cuticle, whatever. So, um, miles, miles, and miles better than the Gerber Dime. It looks better. It functions better. It's just so much better. Thinner, less pace. Um, really good. And I'm noticing now that we're kind of running out of light, so I'm going to try to open up my curtain a little bit. Oh, yeah. There we go. All right. Next. This is a little keychain uh, OTF. Yeah, it looks like a USB drive. But it is, in fact, a little OTF. Um, I carried this on my keychain for a little while. Um, I really like it, but I'm always carrying a knife anyways, so I didn't really feel the need to have this on there. Um, but it is really cool. Um, I like it a lot. It's a D2 blade. It's made by Boker. It's called the Boker USB. Um, this thing too has developed a pretty cool patina just from use and rattling around on the keys. Um, aluminum body, pretty cool. All right, now the real star of the show, my Leatherman. This came with a nylon case, which is dumb. I bought the nice leather one and look how good it looks. I mean, it's worn in. Man, I love, I just love everything about this whole thing that's in my hand right now. I love the case, and I really love the Leatherman. This is the Leatherman rebar. 
and it is my favorite Leatherman. I've tried uh, quite a few Leatherman over the years, and uh, this is my favorite. It's the rebar. I feel like it's kind of uh, the less popular one too, and I'm not sure why. Um, the the whole head of the pliers are really like just robust. They're thick. They're beefy. Um, it, they're just tough, man. They're really comfortable to grip. Replaceable wire cutters. Um, I use these things multiple times a day, every day. Um, we've got a kind of serrated blade. It's super duper sharp. We have a full 3D Phillips head. Perfect. Love it. We have a can opener. Works great. I just used it the other day. And we have our saw. Works great. It's amazing. <clears throat> then we have our plain blade over here. We have our awl. We have two flat heads, a big and a small. We have a lanyard ring. In case you want to, you know, you can leave that out while it's closed and uh, have it hooked up to a lanyard or whatever you want. And then we have the file. And let me tell you guys, this file is amazing. I use this uh, at work. I, 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 I actually file metal with it and it works so good. And it's got a file on this edge too, so you can use that for cutting. Um, it's just really good. One side's for metal, one side's for wood. Um, really good file. Guys, this Leatherman is just freaking awesome, man. The, uh, all the tools lock into place. The way you unlock it is by pushing on the back here. Everything's tight. Everything's snappy. I love the sound of this blade um, closing. Everything's just, it's just good, man. It's a really good Leatherman. It's compact. It's not too big. It's got everything I need. Love that Leatherman. When it breaks, if it ever does, I'm buying a new one immediately. All right, next one is a, a little fidget toy. Um, I saw these like really expensive um, little like clicker slider things. Um, they're made with like zirconium and brass and titanium. Um, and I really wanted one, but you know, there's no way I'm paying that much. So I got this little 3D printed one. Um, and it's pretty fun, man. I messed around with it a lot for like a couple days and then I kind of, I don't know, I kind of lost interest in it. But every once in a while I'll pick it up and mess around with it. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's got magnets in there, so yeah, it's kind of cool. I got it on Etsy. My Zippo, I don't carry this one um, a whole lot, um, but I have it if I ever want it. I know a few tricks, mostly just that one. <laughs> uh, my wallet, this is a homemade wallet. Uh, I've been trying for a long time to make a good wallet and um, I have not really succeeded yet and I'm not gonna say that this is the one either uh, it's it's not perfect it does carry all my stuff uh, well um, sometimes I just keep my cash kind of in the front there and sometimes it kind of gets lost in there down at the bottom and you gotta dig around um, and if you want a card that's in the middle you kinda have to pull out the whole stack and then go through them um, but it works fine uh, I'm still uh, I'm. Uh, one day I'll make the perfect wallet, uh, and this is not it. But I do like it. Um, it's leather, sinew, um, simple uh, but effective, and it's small, and I like it. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about the keys. I carry the uh, Keybar Junior in aluminum. Uh, the, all these keys, uh, well, with the exception of one, uh, all these keys unlock various things on my welding rig, my truck. So I've got my toolbox key, uh, one key that unlocks my leads, and uh, one key that unlocks, uh, well, I have one lock on my stinger and one on my ground leads. Um, and then the fourth one is for my house. Um, so yeah, uh, I love the key bar junior. Uh, I do have uh, like two more keys that I just didn't really want to fit on here. I might be able to. Is there enough thread? There might be enough threads on there for me to fit one more key, or maybe two more. Um, but I think next I'll probably get the full-size key bar. Um, and I'd like to get the titanium one next. 
uh, but I really like it. Now the way I, I have all my keys secured is from these um, night eyes, um, kind of number six shaped uh, clips. Um, I had an occasion once where I was working at a sandy job and I, I was just carrying a regular carabiner like this with snap rings on it and um, my keys fell off and I couldn't find them. They were lost in the sand. Uh, luckily it wasn't the keys for my truck, but it was it was keys for, I think at the time I had a, a camper shell on my truck. And it was the keys for my camper shell. And uh, so, uh, they, I mean, they were just gone. Um, and the weird thing was, uh, a couple weeks later I was at that same job and I looked down at the ground and they were sitting right at my feet. So I did find them, but after that, I only use these now. Um, they basically, they clip in the first area and then they clip down into a secondary area from which they cannot escape from. So uh, I, I use this, this is on my belt. I made this by the way. Um, and then I just clip everything to this here. So this is on my belt, this goes in my pocket. They're never going anywhere, they're never coming off until I go down and unclip them. Um, on my truck key um, uh, deal, I have the uh, Olight IR2 EOS. I think this is the best small flashlight um, you can get, at least that I've heard of or tried. Um, this thing is great. Um, you can just push down and you have the low mode there. Um, or you can spin it and then you have the low and then a high mode. And the high mode is pretty bright. I think it's somewhere like 100 lumens. And this thing is freaking rechargeable, yo. Check that out. Look at that. This thing is great. Um, I hardly even notice it's on the keychain. It's small. It's just great. Uh, and then I also have a handcuff key. Not sure. I mean, I don't know. I think I was envisioning like being kidnapped and be ha having my hands handcuffed and then realizing that I had this on my keys and being really happy that I had it. <laughs> That'll probably never happen, but it's small enough to where I don't really notice it, so I'll just keep it on there. You know, you never know. What if it saved my life, you know? That'd be pretty sweet. So those are the keys. Let's talk about the tape measure really quick. Um, I don't carry this if I'm not working, but I am working a lot of the time, so I do have this on me quite a bit. Uh, this is my older one. My newer ones in the truck, but this is the ultimate metal fabricator's tape measure. Um, it's small, it's thin, it's a 12 footer. If you're fabricating, you hardly ever need to measure something longer than 12 feet, so you don't need a big old thing hanging off your hip. This is all you need. Um, it's got a thick tape. Uh, a lot of the 12 foot tape measures have like really skinny tapes, which I hate. It's got a thick tape, it always snaps back in well. Uh, it's just simple, it's great, it's compact. I love this freaking tape measure. Love it. Now the only fixed blade that's on this list is my Essie Azula because um, I carry this when I'm hiking or any really anytime I'm wearing a backpack. Um, what I really like about it, it's got that hole. So I just clip this onto my backpack somewhere and I have it um, kayaking, hiking, really whatever. Um, I really like this knife. I got the red one. Um, I have the uh, paracord wrapped handle. Um, I like that because I always have paracord with me. I can just unwrap it and use it and uh, the knife is still perfectly functional without that on there. <clears throat> um, it's comfortable. It's sharp. I mean it's an SE. You guys know. Um, really good knife. And that about does it for my EDC stuff. Um, should we talk about my best knives really quick? Let's do it. So, these four knives are the most expensive and best knives in my collection. And no, they're not super crazy knives, um, but for me that's a lot of money. Um, here they are. So, most of these knives have been heavily modded, with the exception of this one. And it doesn't need mods because it's already badass. So the first one is my uh, Spyderco Paramilitary 2. 
this is my primary work knife. I carry this almost every day if I'm not carrying a different knife for review or, you know, sometimes I mix it up. But um, I carry this knife quite a bit at work. And man, this thing is just fantastic. The titanium scales have worn in very nicely. You can see some scratching on there, um, which I do not mind one bit. I think it gives it character. I think it makes it look nice and just used and, you know, just like a tool should be. Um, I mean, you guys know Spyderco. It's, it's just a great, great knife. The compression lock, so easy. One-handed operation. Um, I do have the compression lock made easy on there. Um, so that makes the compression lock even easier. Uh, if you don't know, it's just this little G10 tab that you um, glue onto your compression uh, lock. And uh, it just like brings the face of that up so that your you know your finger is not digging in there to decompress the lock. Um, it's just kind of like a button lock now. Um, makes it really easy to use. I can kind of even use like this part of my finger. So I go to flick it and then I can kind of just I don't even really have to move my hand very much to close it. So really great. Um, the scales are from Flytanium. They're the classic flat scales. I have a brass lanyard tube plug, love that. And then this backspacer is just a 3D printed backspacer. I, I'm, I'm still deciding if I like it or not. Um, it just pops off like that. I, I kind of like it off. I think, for, I think it kind of cheapens up the knife a little bit just because it's plastic. Um, I usually leave it off, but I put it in the other day just to see if I liked it again. And then I realized that, nope, I didn't really like it again. Uh, so yeah, that's the uh, the Spyderco Paramilitary 2. Really, really love this knife. Action is perfect. Everything about it's perfect. Now the Benchmade Bug Out. This was my first higher end knife. Um, you know, high high end knife means something different for everybody. Um, for me, this is a high end knife. <clears throat> um, it's the Benchmade Bug Out. You guys know what it is. If you don't, um, it doesn't come like this. Uh, it comes with uh, basically plastic scales. Uh, and it's, it, honestly, I didn't like it like that. <laughs> I didn't like the plastic, it felt cheap. Uh, it was very, very light, but you know, uh, I don't care too much about be it being really light. I care more about it fe feeling like a, a good knife in my hand, like a sturdy, knife that's ready to work, ready to, uh, you know, uh, do whatever I need it to do. So uh, when I put these scales on, it absolutely changed the knife dramas dramatically, <laughs> dramatically for me. And I, I still love this knife, man. <clears throat> um, like I said, it was my first high-end knife. Uh, and to this day, I still love it. Action is perfect. It just flies out so easily. I can even reverse flick it. The axis lock, fantastic. Blade just falls shut, man. Um, it's just so good. The scales are also from Flytanium. Titanium from Flytanium. I got blue anodized titanium hardware all up in here. And then I put a copper backspacer in there. So um, this, is my, this is my ultimate bug out. I really, really like this bug out. Next, the Demco AD 20.5. Man, I lusted after the uh, 8020s uh, for a long time. Uh, I wanted one so bad. I remember the first time I saw someone opening and closing it, I was like, I just, I mean, maybe this is your first time seeing one, and I hope it's blowing your mind as much as it was mine. But just that sound. Just, I mean, it was a it was a unique locking mechanism that I'd never even considered to be possible before, uh, and it blew my mind. And uh, ever since then, I wanted one so so badly. And they finally came out with the eighty twenty point fives, and that was still a little bit too much for me uh, to spend. Until one day, I just decided to say, you know what, f it, I'm doing it, and I got one, <clears throat> and I absolutely loved it. It was everything I, I had ever dreamed of. 
Uh, and then I decided to get these aluminum scales for it, which even uh, it uh, made it that much better. Uh, I really want actually, I really actually want titanium scales on here, but I could only afford the aluminum, um, and I do really, really like them. I love that milling pattern on it. Um, it's just a really good looking knife. And uh, one day I'll get the titanium version. Um, but for now, this thing is, I just love it. I put a mirror edge on it, or high polish mirror. It's not totally a mirror, but it's close. Um, this thing is just great. Uh, it's ergonomic. It's It disappears in the pocket. Um, the only thing I don't really like is it's not a deep carry clip, but you can get an aftermarket one. I just haven't got around to it yet. Um, but it's really thin. It's great in the pocket. It's extremely tough. Um, it's fun to mess around with. And one thing cool that I learned the other day is you can do this. You can flip it upside down and just kind of use gravity to flick it out. That's kind of cool. So, yeah. AD 20.5. Really love this knife. And the newest knife of the bunch is the Kaiser uh, Deviant. I really like this knife. Um, as soon as I saw it and started checking it out, I knew that I would really like it. Um, I just knew it. I love patina. I love copper. I love micarta. It has all those things. It's got a sheep's foot blade, which I love. It's got a really high polish on all the liners and just all the hardware. Um, it doesn't have jimping anywhere, which I actually really love. Um, it just it classes it up a bit, you know. It's not doesn't look tactical. It just looks like a really nice um, knife that will just cut really well and just do everything you need it to do. Um, I just I love the look of this knife. And um, the action is really, really good. The D10 is fantastic. It just thing just flies out. It's buttery smooth. It doesn't quite fall shut, but give it a little nudge and it's going down. Yeah. Reverse flick. Yeah, fantastic. Love this knife. And uh, those are my four best knives, and that was uh, most of my EDC stuff. So, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I know that was a long video, but if you're still here, I appreciate you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Adios.